Welcome to A Guide to Every Deck in Pioneer. Today we're looking at Kin and Combo. Kin and Combo is a combo deck that uses Kin on Bonder Prodigy in combination with non-land permanents that tap for mana to generate a huge mana advantage and then win with a combo engine. There are two versions of the deck, one centered around Song of Creation and the other Paradox Engine. We'll start with the Song of Creation version first. Song of Creation is an enchantment that draws two cards every time you cast a spell with the ultimate goal of churning through your entire deck and winning with Thassa's Oracle. You can leverage cards that cost zero mana such as Ornithopter, Stonecoil Serpent, and Mox Amber to draw new cards for free. Kinon also makes Amber and Springleaf Drum tap for two which is useful for casting other spells that cost one or more. Deadly Dispute draws cards and leaves behind a treasure token which, with Kinon in play, taps for two and thus recoups the entire cost of Dispute. You don't technically need Kinon to win if you chain enough cheap spells back to back, but it's harder without him. Various other spells in the deck also draw more cards or find combo pieces, including Witching Well, the Reality Chip, and Wishclaw Talisman. The deck is very similar to the Cheerios builds historically found in older formats. It's a glass cannon combo deck with few if any means to win if its combo is disrupted or it's outpaced. It doesn't actually generate infinite mana and thus can brick when going off, although the extremely high density of cheap spells including zero mana ones and kin on generating more mitigates this. The only alternate methods to victory are casting a large stone coil serpent or the antiquities war out of the sideboard. The rest of the sideboard includes protection against hand disruption and counter spells such as Leyline of Sanctity, Destiny Spinner, and Malevolent Hermit, removal spells for aggro, and Tormod's Crypt as graveyard hate. Tormod's Crypt is particularly good in this deck since it can be recurred over and over by Emery and it triggers Song of Creation for free. The other version of the deck revolves around Paradox Engine. The Paradox Engine version is less of a glass cannon and has true infinite mana combos. The deck is still interested in generating tons of mana with Kinon, but eschews the Cheerios-esque zero drops for mana elves. Karn the Great Creator is what ties everything together. Along with hate cards, Karn finds combo pieces and win conditions from the sideboard, such as the fourth copy of Paradox Engine, and the deck is actually incapable of winning without him. There are many combo lines, all of which require Paradox Engine. Kinon may also be used but isn't strictly necessary for all of them. First, Paradox Engine is simply an incredible card in this deck for generating huge mana advantages, untapping mana elves, mox ambers, moonsnare prototypes, emery, etc. It's possible to churn through a huge amount of cards even without an infinite combo setup. With Emery and Engine out, you can loop two Mox Ambers from the graveyard to generate infinite mana. If you have Kinon in play as well, you can activate him to find the Reality Chip and cycle through the rest of your deck. If you Brick with a land on top, simply activate Kinon again to change the top card. If you have Kinon and Emery out, you can loop a single Courier's Briefcase since it sacrifices itself to add two mana. This will also create infinite 1-1 tokens which should be enough to win on the following turn barring sweepers. The remaining combos involve fetching cards out of the sideboard with Karn. You can do the same Pestilent Cauldron restorative burst loop found in the mono green ramp deck by using burst to get back Karn and another Karn to get back Pestilent Cauldron from exile, then generate the black mana for Cauldron's infinite mill with Courier's Briefcase or Treasure Vault. With Paradox Engine and a way to generate at least 4 mana, you can cast Ancestral Statue and bounce itself generating an infinite storm count, then win by fetching Aetherflux Reservoir. If there are enough cards in graveyards, you can exile them with Unlicensed Hurst over and over by untapping it with Paradox Engine, then crew it and attack for lethal. The rest of the sideboard is made up of various Karn targets such as Graveyard Hate, Permanent Removal, Treasure Vault if you need a land or way to make non-Simic mana, etc. Most of the sideboard has to be devoted to Karn, so there are few remaining spots for other effects, but what few there are are made up of protective spells and answers to hate pieces. Both versions of the deck can be disrupted by killing Kinon or countering the key combo card, be it Engine or Song. The deck is also stopped dead by anti-storm cards like Deafening Silence and Damping Sphere. Viseju, Odawara, and Moonsnare Prototype can get rid of hate pieces, with Prototype and Odawara also able to save your own combo pieces from removal if you need them to. The deck is quite complex to learn initially, so practice is required. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Kinon Combo. I want to thank my fellow players in the Magic community for whom sharing their experiences helps make these guides possible. You can find additional resources, such as an up-to-date deck list, in the description. If you think I left out anything important or got something wrong, please leave your thoughts in the comments, and stay tuned to see what deck we look at next time.